Look at that thing. It is a thing of beauty, isn't it? It really is a thing of beauty. It is the most inspiring camera I've ever owned. Today we're talking about the X100V and how it can, if it can be improved. Let me know in the comments if you own an X100, any any model X100. Um, I went in at the S. I don't think I had the original one. I think I went in the S. So I've owned everything after the S. Now I think the V is a damn near perfect camera, but we're going to be talking about how it can be improved if it's if it can be improved. Um, the reason being, at the time of filming this, there hasn't been any notification or any uh, rumours or anything that suggesting that there will be a replacement for the X100V. And I'll be honest with you, if you were Fuji, going on the success of this thing, would you bother bringing out a replacement for it? I don't think I'd bother. I think it's doing that well. I think they just need to concentrate on a few more firmware things and just perhaps get another year out of it. It's exceptional. But at um, the X-T5, now we're at the end of uh, January, the X-T5 has been out January 2024. We've the, the X-T5 has been out flipping ages, right? So I'm kind of expecting, and obviously with the X-T5, it's got the brand new 40 megapixel sensor. I'm, I'm kind of expecting something in the next couple of months, I would have thought, to say they're going to bring out a new X100, whatever it's going to be. But really, they don't need to, do they? But in this video, we're going to be talking about how, if they could improve it, how could they possibly improve on this? So that's what we're talking about. Straight off the bat, I've got to say, one of the things that worries me about a newer version of something is them changing and compromising on build quality and something. So the three things I desperately do not want them to change is the actual build, design, everything of the camera. This is incredible. It's the, I had it two weeks and I actually dropped it. It dented the front of the top of the camera. It fell down a side of a, a waterfall, dented the top. But if you've seen where it fell, you'd expect far more than just a dent. And of course, Fuji being Fuji, amazing service. They gave me a replacement um, top panel. They replaced the top panel uh, for 180 quid sort of thing. But the, since then, there isn't a scratch on it. And I've used this professionally for what, over three years? I mean, I don't even know how old the camera is now. Feels like a really long time, but there isn't a mark on the damn thing. There isn't a mark on the camera. The build quality is superb. I absolutely love it. So please, Fuji, if you do bring out a new one, don't change the build quality. Don't change the paint, whatever you've used on the silver one. Um, I don't know if the black's as good, but I hope it is as resistant and everything. Um, the other thing is the screen. If they do bring out another one, I'll just keep the same screen because you, you don't even know there's a flip out screen in the, the back of the damn thing. So if they do bring out another one, I hope... Um, there are very, very minor improvements or something to, to the camera because, yeah, it's very, very impressive. Very impressive. Right, let's rabbit through the dislikes. There are a few that I would change, but there are they are niggles. The first one is going to be the EVF. Now, obviously, it's an EVF OVF. The optical, I, I do find really, really handy, so that's really cool. Um, no real changes on the optical performance, but the EVF for me, the resolution of the EVF, just seems it looks it really does need um, an update in, especially in low light. I really struggle with it sometimes. It also feels a bit small. I don't know why, but if they could improve the EVF on there, that would be amazing. Um, one of the biggest things for me is actually the, the, the single card slot. It's really, this. I've used this camera. I'll put loads of photographs up as we're talking about the camera. I'll put loads of pictures up I've taken. Um, this camera is absolutely a professional camera. It is absolutely a professional. Now, obviously, it depends what you're photographing because any camera is a professional photograph, a professional camera, depending on how you're using it. But I've used this for weddings and events, and I really shouldn't have done. Um, I'll, 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 quite often, I'll be filming with the XT4, XT5, and XT3, and then I'll keep the X100V round my neck. So I've always got a 35 mil camera, even if I'm not there for photography. I've always got a 35 mil camera around my neck. Now, obviously, you don't want to be doing any professional events with a single card slot. And my drone, in fact, every drone I think I've ever had has had a built-in memory, even if it's eight gig or something. Um, it's had a built-in memory. Now, memory cards are so small these days, I don't know why there can't be either a second memory card, which I hate those micro SDs, but there should be a built-in memory. And not something that we can say, if anything goes wrong, we blame Fuji for um, the the loss of memory on that backup. But at least if we, if we, I've had loads of these SD cards corrupt. I've had, I've had loads of them. I've probably had, I've had probably about eight of them break. They physically just break. So, um, yeah, it would be a huge, huge thing for me, and it'd probably be the main reason I would upgrade the camera is for a built-in memory of sorts like that, just so you've got that, um, that reassurance, because it absolutely, with the new lens, 
Um, I wouldn't say the autofocus, but the new lens is really is a professional camera. Really, really nice. Really, really nice tool. The other thing I'd upgrade on it is the autofocus. I just find AFS single is okay. It's got a bit of a it's got a bit of a, a lag to it. It's got a bit of a lag. Yeah, it, it's got a bit of a lag to it. it. But I bought this as a street photographer's camera. To be honest with you, I'd use it in manual focus, zone focus at either two meters or infinity. I mean, that's what it's designed for. So really, I shouldn't really be moaning about the focus on it at all because it's not the it's not the camera's fault that it's too good for what it was designed for. Um, when I bought the first X100S um, or whatever it was I bought, I literally bought it for street photography. I didn't intend even focusing with the thing. I just wanted to be able to put it in F8 or F5.6, back button focus on at two meters or infinity, and that's how I was going to use it. I didn't realize how much I was going to love the camera and how much I was going to be addicted to using it. And it's because of that that I enjoy using it so much that I actually do wish that it had better autofocus, but that's not why I bought it. Continuous autofocusing on it is absolutely appalling. I don't recommend it at all. It's It misses so much, it really is. But that's, I think, down to the lens, and they're not gonna change that. So I think to ask for autofocus, um, continuous autofocus improvements in this camera is just wishful thinking. I just don't think it's gonna happen. But, you know, if it ever did, I um, Fuji's never been <laughs> the number one for that anyway. Like. Um, some. A bit of a division on this one, but the old batteries, the old batteries, the one two six S's, the ones with the round, the ones with the round dots on the bottom there. Make sure you're using the ones with the round dots, um, not the square dots. It's all right for me. I mean, for street photography, I've got, if if I do like four hours for street photography, sit in a coffee shop, it's got a USB C in there. I can charge it and bring a power bank. I mean, even the one I'm filming on now, I'm filming on the XT4. That's running off a power bank filming this. So having a USB C charging point in the bottom in the side there, it's been absolutely fantastic. And on occasion, I have just gone out with the one battery, a lead, and a power bank, and it's been absolutely fine. Um, do I wish I had a better battery in it? Of course I do. Um, especially when you're doing video, if you try and use this as a backup video camera, it's it's got a turner in it for a starter, so it's absolutely worthy of a backup video camera on a tripod, of course. Um, then yeah, the battery goes straight away, and I don't think you can power direct it off a power bank like you can the XT4. So yeah, would I like a better battery in it? Yes. Um, it, they are very old batteries and they, they do really need updating. Are Fuji going to put us a new battery in there? They're not going to fit the same one as the XT5 in there, that's, that's not going to work, is it? So um, yeah. I don't think that's gonna happen. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what they do with that one. That's probably one of the biggest problems they're gonna face. Right, I don't like the fact that it's got no digital IS, digital image stabilization. So in the lens, you're not I don't think you're gonna I don't think you're gonna get IBIS in the body. The damn thing's tiny. I mean that's a lot thicker, isn't it? The the yeah, the uh how can I show you? So the, the thickness there between the two, it's um it's a lot thicker and obviously the XT5's got IBIS in it. Now if they could put digital image image stabilization electronic image Optical, that's the one I'm looking for, optical image stabilization in the lens, fantastic. It's a brand new lens though for this model, so I don't know if they can do that, um, but electronic stabilization, something that, that it corrects in camera might be good, but that's gonna eat the heck out of the battery, isn't it? So again, we're back to the problem with the battery. Um, now these things have got um, that, custom button there sometimes I that, that button actually I change all the time so that might be an ND8 that might um, that might be the built-in ND switch on and off that might be the button that turns uh, face detect on and off or eye detect on and off I don't know it, that's the one I change um, change it all the time now the built-in ND on this is fantastic it's so so handy I've taken some really really cool shots with it um, but then you're always limited to it can only go to say like a thirteenth of a second, maybe an eighth of a second, depending on how slow you can be. Um, if you're hand holding it, you really need some sort of digital stabilization. Uh, if they did that, because I think the I think the Ricoh's got it. I'm not sure, but I think the Ricoh GR's got uh, IS in the camera, and I just think this that is probably the main thing that's missing out of the camera, just to make it, just to make use of that built-in ND8, which is absolutely fantastic, really, really, really handy uh, feature, the ND8.
I hope you're enjoying the video and if like me you use the X100 series camera for street photography please do consider downloading my zine it's a huge support for the channel uh, it's called F8 it's uh, based on street photography but it's designed to help people develop their photography and develop their knowledge of photography throughout the genre the multiple genres of street photography um, it's a huge way of supporting the channel so if you are enjoying it this is a good way of saying thank you um, now there's a number of photographs of 40 images in the in the in the zine um, images like this one were actually taken on the X100V so you can see the metadata uh, profile X100V f11 500 of a second and how it was taken also any mistakes that were made how we could improve the photograph so yeah the idea of F8 is to uh, be an info zine and then I issue 4 should be coming out um, next in the, within the next two weeks hopefully and that's going to be more informative again so obviously the same amount of photographs but more information more helping people learn so if you have downloaded F8 I just want to say a huge thank you it's a massive support and I'll leave all the details wherever they go all around this thing so if you want to check out F8 I'll put the links down there but do jump over to the website subscribe to the newsletter because we're also going to be doing photo walks as well so I can let you know when we're going to be in your area so you could do some uh, joining the photo walks let's go back to the video this is a big deal for me. The if I, if you're an aperture priority, so you select your aperture there, you go to auto there, um, whatever you want to do with your thing. So you're in you're in auto ISO, auto aperture, um, auto ISO, auto shutter, and aperture priority. Now on the back, I've got it so that if you press that button there, I can go straight into auto one, auto two, auto three. So if I can go indoors or outdoors, I can literally just press the button for uh, for indoors. Um, sorry, press the button or go down one and I'm indoors. That's 250, that's 100, that's 500. Now, weirdly, that's amazing because I can just change my minimum shutter speed on the fly, which is really, really cool. What I can't believe you can't do is actually set the minimum shutter. When I go down, I've got base ISO there, highest sensitivity for your ISO, obviously, and then you've got your minimum shutter speed there, 500. It doesn't go past 500th of a second. I find that ridiculous. So that should be a firmware thing. That's one of the things that I think Fuji should have changed on this. Because the fastest base shutter speed you can do on this camera is 500 in auto. Now obviously if I go uh, aperture priority and just come down to 1000 there. So I mean aperture, I've got manual aperture, manual shutter and auto ISO. That's kind of the same thing. But then it won't, it won't automatically adjust the, the shutter speed if it needs to go faster than a 1,000, which is flipping ridiculous. So um, yeah, aperture priority is really, really handy, but why the heck it doesn't go past 500 of a second, I don't know. So yeah, really, really annoying. I assume it does on <laughs> X-T5. I'll put up here if it does or not, I'll check in a second. Um, <laughs> but yeah, 500 of a second maximum is ridiculous, but um, yeah, I suppose it's something that can be done with firmware. Frames per second, now this only does, if I press drive there, on continuous high, it's either got eight or 11 frames per second in um, mechanical shutter. Now in electronic shutter, you can go to 30 frames per second, but there's a crop, huge crop, I think it's like 1.5 or something like that, 1.25. So there is a crop on there. 30 frames per second is amazing though. It's too much. I think something like 15, 15 would be about right. If the, if the new one comes out with about 15 on it, that would be about where it wants to be. I don't want any more than 15 for street photography, really. But then it's it's a leaf shutter lens, isn't it? It's a leaf shutter, so it's down to whether or not the lens can actually do that. I don't know. Um, but yeah, the more frames per second there, definitely more than 11 would be really, really cool. Um, now, that brings you on then to the buffer, which I'm not sure whether or not, because this is quite an old camera as far as... A lot of things have happened now, haven't they, with um, shooting more frames per second and things like that. So I don't know if it's a if it's an old camera as far as buffer, but I would be surprised if the buffer would last more than a second if he tries to take a picture at this at like 15 frames a second. I think it just frees up straight away. So they'd have to improve the buffer as well. So I've mentioned a few things that are quirks that I don't necessarily like about the camera, although they they think I've absolutely come to live with. Um, and I would live with this camera for a long time to come without any problems whatsoever. I adore this camera. I really do adore this camera. If there's things it absolutely needs, I've already mentioned the digital stabilization. That needs to be put in there really for the ND, uh, but hopefully without any crop on the lens. If they put a digital stabilization and it's got a crop on the, on the field of view, that's going to be annoying because obviously that's going to eat into your thing. Better AF speed absolutely for me needs to be improved. It is a professional 
uh, standard camera, the optics on it, the file quality, the low light capability, a uh, better AF would make this a hugely improved professional camera. I've mentioned the battery, the battery needs to be updated. Um, now, the big thing for me though is the sensor, because the X-T5 has got the 40 megapixel um, sensor, which is fantastic. It's a, The X-T5 is a wonderful camera, I really enjoy using it. I, I don't know whether or not I'm noticing a huge difference with the res and stuff on there compared to this. So for me, this would suit a better, like, in the in my dream world, now I'm going to put a few things in this video that are just not going to happen, but in my dream world, you'd have like a very sensor. So you'd have a, a sensor that could shoot 50 megapixels, but then you could change it to shoot 25 or 12 megapixels, 16 or whatever. So it's capable of 50. But when it does 25 or when it does 16 megapixels, the dots that make up the size of the sensor actually get bigger. So the eyeballs, if you will, that gather the light get bigger. As opposed to it just being low res, I would want it to have um, better low, right, low light. Now, if it didn't have the very res sensor, if that's even a thing, I think Leica's got one. I think Leica does, does it where you can shoot at something ridiculous and then when you when you tell it to shoot 25 the ISO and everything gets better it's not like a compromise just on the on the actual file quality you actually are getting more um is photons the right word i can't think of the word whatever it is that make that collects the light i can't think of the word just having better ISO is probably the way this thing needs to go forward because for me street photography 20 megapixels is fine if they put 20 megapixels in this with hugely improved low light because they do crop sensor cameras do fall apart as soon as it gets to about as soon as you get above 1600 iso you can definitely tell 3200 iso there doesn't seem to be any dynamic range when you edit the files so the raws don't seem to have that much in them past uh, 1600 you've got to get it right in camera really i'd love it if they bought out a 20 megapixel one of these which had very very clean sort of 12,000 ISO or more editability, more dynamic range at 6,400 ISO because 20 megapixels, don't forget, is all you really need for most things. Um, I, I don't really crop files from this camera anyway, so I'm never going to need to crop. I don't want it. If I want to crop, I could just put a prime lens on this and do street photography with my XT5. I just want this to be simple um, and, and get it right in camera, just enjoy photography. The big thing as well, I've noticed a few times, I've gone, I've, I've been in burst mode and I've seen some, I've been zone focusing, I've seen something about to happen. I've gone three, two, one, bang, hold the shutter down and expected it to take a burst, a load of burst photographs. And it's either taken one photograph because it hasn't been ready or whatever. It has been, it doesn't go to sleep. I always switch it on. Um, but it seems to have a lag, operational lag. So when you hit the shutter, sometimes it doesn't, like I think then it just took a load of photographs, but just a, not all the time. It's not all the time. Sometimes you just want it. Yes, yeah, so then that's fine. But sometimes I just go to use it and then I press play and it's just taking one picture. I'm like, why is it taking one picture? I've just been holding the shutter down. Why is it just taking one? So the things like the responsiveness, um, that, that again, that's a firmware thing. I'm pretty sure they could have they could do that in firmware. So really, there isn't really much um, this needs to be done, but just to make it um, more responsive would be really really nice. Uh, we've made, mentioned the built-in memory. I really think they've got to do it I, because I've been traveling um, a few times and just bought this one camera. If I go on holiday, just bought this one camera, and it's really liberating not thinking what lenses I need to take for the XT5 or and all that sort of thing. And the missus will use this camera as well. It, you know, not because it looks good, but she it, it's it's easy for her to get used to because she hasn't got to get used to anything complicated zooms or anything like that. It's an it's an easy camera to master. But um, when you go on holiday, you I always change my card every day because <laughs> I just can't risk it. But then you still you could still have a corrupt card just because you're changing the card doesn't mean the card's not going to die. You could still have a corrupt card, so it does need to have a built-in memory and just to make it more of a travel-friendly camera. People use these for travel all the time. They're brilliant. A, a really nice feature would be haptic feedback because I love the leaf shutter in this, and I love that even let me just put it in um, mechanical. Yeah, it's in mechanical shutter now. So that's by the microphone. So if I put it there, away from the microphone, 
I bet you can't hear it. So a mechanical shutter is really quiet, so you don't really need to use it in an electronic shutter for street photography. It's really good if you're not trying to get attention. If, if you do that and people can't hear the shutter going dong, 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 dong. One of the massive advances over, over DSLR, wasn't it, when we when we got mirrorless cameras and they were quieter and quieter. This thing's next, I mean, I, I used to photograph a lot of um, concerts, piano concerts, and um, the, I could be next to people in the auditorium taking pictures with this and it didn't have to be an electronic shutter. An electronic shutter sounds great if you've got one of these A9 Mark III global shutters, but then with the artificial light, the, um, you, the electronic shutter would cause all sorts of problems. So this camera was guaranteed to get me out of trouble because it had a mechanical shutter, which was really, really quiet. The only thing is, sometimes if you're in a loud environment like London, walking around the city, you can't feel it's taking a photograph. So having a haptic feedback, if you don't know what haptic is, it's basically like that. If you've got like a... Um, an Apple Watch or something, when you press an order, it does like a dum dum. You know, you get like a, an artificial thud. You know, nothing's moving, it's creating this thud. Now, I'd love it if there was a way that it just went dud, 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 so you could have an haptic feedback. I think it's called haptic or heptic. I think it's haptic uh, feedback, so that you could have it in electronic shutter, or you could have it in, in mechanical, and you just have a bit of a dud, 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 dud. you know, a, si a silent, but something only your hand, basically, they could put it there on that side where your hand is, and only your hand would feel it's taking a photograph. Because, yeah, in noisy environments, you can't hear this thing. Okay, so this is the absolute no chance fat pants section. We're not getting anything. Um, now I want them to bring out a black and white version of this. I'm probably the. I'm, I think there's a few others out there. Let me know in the comments if you think a black and white version of this camera would be amazing. Now when I mean black and white, I mean black and white sensor. I had the Leica Q2 monochrome for a couple of weeks, and I fell in love with that camera. Um, now black and white is is obviously subjective. You can just turn them in black and white. But it's nice to have that discipline. It's also nice to have the stupid high ISO capabilities. And the, and the, the cameras are more sensitive to light when they're black and white only, when they haven't got the RGB filters on them. So a black and white only version of this camera would sell like hotcakes. It really would. And I think I would buy one straight away. I'd really, really like a black and white version of this. I don't think it's going to happen, though. No. Absolutely fat chance this one's going to happen. A full frame version. <laughs> I've got to mention it. But if they did a full frame version of this, what would compete with it? It would it would wipe the floor with Leica. I'm sorry for for six grand, whatever the Leica Q3 costs. A full frame version of this. It ain't going to happen. I know it ain't going to happen. But a full frame version of this would be absolutely fantastic. I know the Nikon ZF has just come out. I don't like the lens, I think the plastic in crap, and I don't like the flip screen. I'm, I was tempted with the Nikon ZF because obviously it's full frame. Um, but yeah, no, it's not Fuji, it doesn't, the lenses aren't, it's it's not an X100. If they brought out a full frame one, not happening, I know that, but let me know in the comments if you think you'd buy one as well. Um, now I've mentioned the variable resolution, like, oh, I've put notes here, M11, it's the Leica M11 that's got the very res. So the very res, sensor where you can shoot at say 40 and then when you choose 24 or when you choose 16 it actually gets the eyeballs get bigger so you get better low light you're not just compromising because remember the nikon z7 i was in iceland uh, no weren't i was in isla sky and because i'd done a sports event the day before a couple of days before i photographed some rugby i'd put the z7 in like 24 megapixel whatever whatever it was and when i went to sky I took these pictures and I didn't realise why the file size was so small. And then I looked at the, the RAWs and they just weren't, um, they didn't have the quality at all. I know we're going for 47, to, but it was a huge drop in quality. Uh, there was no actual benefit other than the file sizes. So I don't want, I, I just want a file that when you look at it, it's very clearly better in dynamic range and you know the eyeballs are bigger. I don't just want the compression that you'd get with the Z7, the file compression, I want the eyeballs to be bigger, I want it to be basically... Well, it's, you've got the Sony A7R, you've got the Sony A7 and you've got the A7S. <laughs> just merge all those three sensors together and put it in one of these, I'll be happy. Um, now, uh, another no chance, 33 or an 18 mil version. I really, really... Oh, that's not the 18. I thought that was the 18 mil. Oh, I've got the 18 mil for the Fuji, uh, the the new 18 mil, and where it is. Um, that's fantastic. I'm really enjoying it. So if they bought out a wide, I know you can get the teleconverters. I've I've been te very tempted, but they're blinking huge. So whether or not they bring out a a 33 mil version of this or an 18 mil version, I absolutely don't know. I don't know. But what you know, would be cool a stealth black version. None of this Fuji stuff. Um, I hate the like a red dot. I absolutely hate the Leica red dot. That's one of the reasons I like the monochrome. But completely 
like completely black matte stealth would be fantastic i would really really be cool so yeah that is it i don't think i've missed anything um i don't lock that so i think a few people are going to say well, that needs to be lockable i've never knocked it so i think it's just perfect at the, at the minute Ergon um, ergonomically and everything and build quality is absolutely fantastic um to be honest though i think i'd be more likely to buy an x pro 4 than than this because the X Pro Three for me was a bit of a disaster. It just didn't work for my photography. Um, I never I never bought one. I was tempted. I went in the shop twice to buy one, but just walked out without buying it because it just it just didn't work ergonomically for me. But the and the you know the Jura thing um, and that little screen problem. But yeah, if they got an X Pro Four that came out, I I'll be happy to keep the X One Hundred V. To be honest, I mean look at it. It's a freaking thing of beauty. It doesn't need changing. Let me know in the comments if you think Fuji should bother bringing out a new one of them. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Do check out F8 Magazine, as mentioned. I hope you enjoy it. If you're already a downloader, subscriber of F8 Magazine, it's a huge, huge help for the channel, massively supporting the channel. So very, very kind of you. All the all the really amazing feedback we've had on F8, it's been really, really nice. So yeah, hope you're enjoying it. Issue four is underway. I've made a start on issue four, so that'll be out in the next couple of, hopefully the end of next week. We should, you know, fingers crossed. Um, I, if you don't know already, I lost my hard drive. I lost all my street photography. So yes, back up your photographs this instant. If you haven't done, I'm using Backblaze now. So yeah, do do that. And um, yeah, hopefully I'll have issue four of F8 coming out soon. But yeah, thank you so much for downloading F8. I'll leave all the details if you want to check out F8, F8 wherever it goes in one of these corners and down there and all that. But yeah, thank you again for watching. Let me know what you think. If there's anything off the, that I've missed off the X100V successor, let me know in the comments and I look forward to seeing you. Thanks very much, guys. Take care.